Hello, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. In today's video, I use a very textured, beginner-friendly finish to modernize these nightstands. I also use a $20 tool from Walmart to completely upgrade the legs, and I use some hardware that doesn't require you to do any filling of holes, and if you're like me, I struggle with filling holes, and so I love this hardware so much. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to do this makeover and I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna go nice and slow so I don't leave anybody behind. First things first, gotta get it all cleaned up and I'm one of those optimistic flippers that I always think I'm gonna find something very valuable inside the dresser drawers. <laughs> I have yet to find anything cool, but I'll keep looking. I use just dish soap and a scrub and make sure to get in those nooks and crannies. Sometimes if you notice you have some bleed through, it may be because you didn't get in those nooks and crannies and get those nice and clean. That happened to me a couple of times. After I get the nightstands nice and dry, I'm moving forward with this texturizing technique. I'm using wood filler mixed with water. My wood filler's kind of dried out, so you might not have to work so hard to mix it up. But basically, you're going for the consistency of paint. It should, you know, it should have a little bit of like stickiness to it. And then I'm just going to use my glove to create lines across the tops of these. These are not solid wood nightstands. They have a lot of damage. You can't really see it in the video, but there's quite a few dings and nicks and things like that where normally you would have to use wood filler, sand, use wood filler again, and sand to get it smooth. Whereas using this technique, you're just camouflaging and blending all of it in together, and it looks beautiful in the end, and you didn't have to work as hard. So I am all about beautiful pieces that didn't require perfection and didn't require you to spend a month working on. But sometimes then they're solid wood and they're really worth that time. These are not that <laughs> type of piece of furniture. So I just used the leftover uh, cleaning bucket that I had from when I washed them and clean that all off and then dispose of that safely. And then on the edges, I'm just using the sponge that I was using earlier to clean and I'm gonna wipe those up. Again, I'm just doing the highly textured part on the tops where there was a lot of damage. If your whole piece is heavily damaged, you might wanna do this all over the entire piece. For these nightstands, I just needed to apply it to the top since that's where all the damage was. After it fully dries, you can lightly sand it with some 220 grit sandpaper just to give it a better feel to the touch. You're going to keep the texture, of course, but this will remove any little rocky bits that might be left behind. Then we're going to be painting it with Rust-Oleum milk paint and trying to, as we go, create long brush strokes that mimic the look of wood grain.
good team. If you're new around here, then I will introduce you to this DIY glaze that I make. It's half paint and half clear coat. I tend to use a water-based polyurethane and just some oops paint or I'll use paint from the hardware store to make it. And I like to do a little test spot to make sure that I'm going to like the color combination. and. If you've you know seen on the channel, I've done a lot of color combinations and I love when you guys experiment and try out different ones as well. That's so fun for me to see. This is just a like a light tan color. I'll try to put it in the description for you if I can remember it. But it was in um, a mason jar, so I've lost track of the can. Anyway, I just get it on there with a dollar store uh, paintbrush and then I'm using again from the dollar store this little kids broom. I um, I liked the whisk broom was what I've used for years and I, I still really like that as well but I find that these kids brooms or these like soft bristled brooms remove the they're less likely to scratch the paint underneath and so if you have a little bit more delicate of paint underneath it's great for that and um, so I'm really liking using these uh, these days I just I when we moved I lost my whisk broom and I used my daughter's she had this little broom and I have like never gone back since <laughs> I just really like it so I have tried to find something similar to link for you guys to be able to use from Amazon but I found mine at the dollar store I like to work in my garage either in the mornings or the evenings when it's cooler and that gives me a little bit more open work time and my paint doesn't dry up on me too quickly. But if I do find my paint drying up too quickly like in these coming summer months then I can just keep some Floetrol nearby or some General Finishes extender nearby and just follow the instructions like you would do with paint and just splash you know a little bit in there and that will keep your DIY glaze from drying up on you because you do need enough work time to brush it back and forth quite a bit. You can see I, I go over the front like, you know, 10 times or so to get the look that I'm going for. In general, the more times you brush it, the lighter the look is going to appear. Okay. 
I use this tool so much now that I'm planning on upgrading to the DeWalt cord free version of this and it's got a little bit more power to it and will cut a little bit faster. But in the meantime, this $20 tool has really earned its keep <laughs> and it does a great job. Something that can help also if you um, are struggling with cutting straight lines, which I do often uh, struggle with cutting straight lines, is put a piece of wood on top and clamp it down. I didn't do it for the video because it would make it a little bit harder for you to see what I was cutting, but that's something that um, my husband taught me and that helps a lot with cutting straighter lines. And then here is my hardware hack. I've shown you guys before, but just using this solid type of hardware covers up the old holes so you don't need to do any wood filling and you can do the bigger hardware. Let's take a look at the before, my $30 Facebook Marketplace find into these beautiful, luxurious, if I do say so myself, nightstands. And I'm so excited. We just got a new dog. We adopted him. He's like nine months old and he's a crazy pup. So you'll see him in future videos. I am so excited that you guys watched this makeover with me and I will see you in the next one. If you're not already subscribed, make sure and do so before you leave so you don't miss anything. Bye. Ready? Sit. <laughs>